Hey folks, Dino here again. This time with a, another figureized standard model kit. Um, yeah, truth be told, I completely forgot <laughs> that uh, figureized had came out with a couple of what they're calling new spec versions of, well, at the time of this recording, just Goku and Vegeta. Um, but unfortunately, we haven't heard anything since this guy released. Um, I think it's close to a year now since this guy came out. But yeah, unfortunately, the figure I standard line seems to be all but dead at the moment. Hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully they're just working on uh, new kits. Because, quite frankly, this Vegeta is, well, he's pretty much a figure arts in model kit form. Um, I am very impressed with this guy, especially compared to figure eyes like their older kits. But yeah, like I said before, I completely forgot this uh, this figure had been released. Um, I didn't like the Goku that they came out with in the new spec version. It looks good, but it's way too oversized. But for whatever reason, the Vegeta is the perfect scale for figure arts. Um, I just have to figure out how to get figure arts heads onto him. Because, yeah, the, the head leaves a bit to be desired. <laughs> but yeah, um, enough of my rambling as per usual. Let's get him off the turntable and take a look at the box. So yeah, um, in terms of the box, it's just standard sort of Bandai model kit uh, box. In fact, it's, it's almost identical to the uh, Gunpla boxes. Um, <laughs> the sprues are even like pretty much identical in how you cut them off and things like that. So I would assume it's like the same division of Bandai doing these kits. Um, because, yeah, the... The instructions and everything are very similar. Um, but yeah, in terms of the box, we have Vegeta, new spec, figure eyes standard, plastic model kit, a um, couple of poses there. Um, this, which they're calling Muscle Build-Up System Plus, um, that basically means they're hiding the seam lines in the muscle definition of the figures. Uh, so when you're building it, it looks more natural. Um, because obviously, actual figure apps and stuff, they are injection molded with like one solid piece that they then connect together with the joints. Model kits, they are basically hollow halves of plastic, which you then snap together with the joint in between. And yeah, that's pretty much um, how you do it. Yeah, um, for some reason it's Dragon Ball Z. Not Dragon Ball Super. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Bandai, 15 plus. Um, and all the legalese on the bottom. Um, in terms of the sides, you have some pictures there of Vegeta, all the poses, everything you can do. Yes, it does actually come with a display base, um, but a bit disappointingly is it doesn't come with an effect piece which is what Figure Eyes was known for. Um, some of their effect pieces towards when they stopped really doing the, the line, um, getting really good, um, which I'm kind of disappointed I never got the chance to get. Yeah, I'm um, just showing you there. Uh, they're doing something new with the, the sprue, with the runners, um, which essentially made this figure really easy to make. Um, the sprue is moulded in such a way that you can actually snap it at specific points um, and it's divided up into like dragon balls so each section of the figure is designated a dragon ball so you snap it off, match up the dragon ball and you only have the runner or runners that you actually need in front of you so, yeah, if you knew what you were doing, you could pretty much do this without instructions, to be completely honest with you. Um, in fact, parts of it I did do without instructions. <laughs> so, yeah, 
really fun kit to do, really easy, um, really simple. Um, so no glue, it doesn't need glue, but there is a couple of bits, specifically the shoulders, the yellow shoulders. Um, I would probably recommend gluing those in place because they have a tendency to pop off. Um, Coloured plastic, use a nipper, blah 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 blah. Um, I used the same nipper kit as I do with my Gunpla, uh, so link will be in the description for that um, and a couple other things. I also did a bit of panel lining on the armour, um, brown for the yellow section and grey for to outline the white of the armour. Um, I also used grey on his face to fill in the mouth and under the eyes, gives it a bit more definition and really brings out the detail in this kit, makes it look a lot more premium. But yeah, um, let's take a look at his accessories. So in terms of accessories, um, he does come with quite a lot. Obviously you have to build them, um, they don't just come in the box like that, but yeah. Um, for starters, he has a decent stand. Um, I was actually quite surprised that this was in the package to begin with. Um, the peg holes, unfortunately, are not the same size as standard figure arts, the uh, Tamashi stages. So you can't really use it for that. Um, and my only other complaint is that the stems are quite thin. Um, when swiveling it, it almost feels as if it's going to snap. So yeah, they could have done with having that a bit thicker, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, really simple. The sides are keyed, so you find where the key is, slot it together, straighten it up, and it's not coming apart anytime soon. Uh, top is your standard grabber. Um, those are the exact same. You find the key, and they're never coming out. I kind of wish a uh, figure arts would do that with theirs. Um, you also get a couple of extra pieces. Um, not sure why. Um, you get a spare piece for the top. Um, the one that I put on it has a bit of a an extension to it. Not sure why this one doesn't have an extension, but either does for me, I suppose. Um, I'm guessing they're planning on using this for other like kits and stuff um, but yeah also comes with this piece which they say is for the Tamashi stage act 5 um, I believe that is the one with the hinge for like the Gundam model kits and such so yeah not sure why this comes with it my only assumption is that certain Gundam kits will come with these stands in the future which if so that's a really good thing he comes with four heads or four uh, faces i should say so i put the smirk on him for display and um, looks really good this one specifically i tried to do a bit of panel lining for his ears to give that a bit of definition see how that looked turned out okay i think um, like I said before, I done it under his eyes, um, just a slight one, and then smudged it, so you do get the shading without the harsh line. And then I just panel lined his mouth to give that a bit more definition. Um, also comes with a normal stern face. A teeth gritted face. Which, yes, I panel lined the teeth just to give it a bit more depth again. And finally, a yelling face, which again looks decent. Um, I do still give props to Bandai for how they do the faces of the Dragon Ball figures, um, or the Dragon Ball kits. They don't have any stickers, um, unlike the Gunpla. You literally just put the black piece with the white piece, and in terms of the yelling face, the pink piece as well, and that all fits into the face, just like that. Um, 
it is a good system, but in my opinion, that makes them kind of look a bit CGI, um, as opposed to like proper anime design. It makes them look a bit three D. I think um, some eye stickers would go a long way, even as like an option. Like keep them the way they are the now. Um, have them all be built up like that and you can choose to put the sticker on before you fit it all together like just a thought um it also comes with a crossed arm piece which in my opinion is so much simpler than what they do with figure arts um it's literally just two pieces and um, the white piece i had to sandwich two pieces together and to put it on you literally pop it apart at the glove and pop that in to his shoulder. Um, no separating the bicep or anything like that. A lot simpler. I think the... Is it the Namek Vegeta? Uh, I haven't reviewed him yet because UK takes forever for figure arts to come here. Um, <laughs> I believe he has a similar um, design for this. So maybe they've already implemented it. Um, he comes with quite a lot of hands, which I am pleased to report do actually work with figures. Um, it's just a straight peg on the figure, but if you look in there, um, it is actually just a peg hole, um, which is really good. I do like that. So we get a pair of grippy hands, which in my opinion look a bit undersized compared to the rest of the hands, um, but they still look decent. Um, these are mostly for his final flash. A pair of kind of relaxed, kind of posy hands. Um, which are pretty decent. A pair of splayed open key blast hands. Um, obviously with all of these and with model kits, if you find they're lacking a bit of detail, you can always just do a bit of a wash, do a bit of a panel line on them. Um, but I like the white to stay like start quite everywhere but the chest. <laughs> um, but yeah, key blast hands. Pair of martial arts posy hands. Just straight up ones. And obviously a pair of fists which are on him already. So yeah, um, let's get the camera set up and take a look at him and his details and accessories now. Okay, um, apologise about that folks. Um, <laughs> I got a text in the middle of filming there and it completely made me lose track of what I was doing. So yeah, um, we are back. <laughs> so in terms of the details, um, as I said with the box, um, they have hidden all of the sort of connections in the seam lines and such um, with the muscle definition. So you do not really notice at all that it's a kit and it's been put together. Um, I'll just bring up the contrast there a little bit so you can see the blue. So yeah, they've done a really good job there. You do not see the seam lines really at all. And um, the only bit that we could really do with a bit better is Oops, sorry folks. The joys of having your camera in front of you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the seam lines right at this side here. Those kind of stand out, but other than that, you really cannot tell that this has been built as a model kit and not as a figure. So yeah, but other than that, um, like I said before, I panelined the white, so you can actually see the detail in those edges. I panelined the lines in the yellow as well, which are really good. Do really like that. I also panelined the boot tips. Um, one thing I kind of wish they would have done is, like, for some reason, Tamashi. Most companies these days seem to be forgetting that this suit design in the Android saga, when he first shows up with this suit, he doesn't have 
a yellow tips on his boots. They are stark white. The rest of it's the same as his uh, rest of his boot. Uh, companies seem to be forgetting that now. Um, even Tamashi, their uh, Android Saga Super Vegeta 2.0 re-release that they done, um, that was supposed to go with Android 19. Android 19 even came with extra accessories for it. But the boot tips were yellow. Um, when he fought Android 19, they did not have coloured boot tips. So, yeah. Um, what I'm trying to say is, it would have cost Bandai literally nothing to give us white versions. And then we could choose which one we wanted to build. Um, but knowing Bandai, they are probably saving that for a Scouter Vegeta um, with this. Because they could really use most of this figure and just redo the chest for a Scouter Vegeta, honestly. But yeah. Um, other than that, really like the details. Um, the white on the back seems a little bit too big from like what I can recall. Uh, let's bring in the figure arts just to quickly check here. Yeah, the figure arts is a lot more yellow than white. So I am not sure what they did there, to be completely honest with you. Yeah, um, moving on to articulation swiftly. Um, the head is on a double ball peg. Um, unfortunately, the ball peg is a sort of awkward in-between size. Like, it's too small for the likes of, say, Kong's pegs. A Kong Studios Beast Deities pegs. So you can't just swap that in. Um, it's also slightly too big for the 3.0s like Gohan and Goku, uh, the Demon Ankle Fit Marshalist forever. Um, and it's also slightly different size, ever so slightly, than the 2.0 uh, Vegeta body. So while you can, I have tested it, um, specifically with this Demon Ico fit head. It will fit on there, um, but it will stretch the peg slightly, so bear that in mind. The Tonson Art Toys one, I checked it. While it's the same size peg as standard figure arts heads, Tonson's heads tend to be quite hard plastic. Um, so yeah, if you were going to do that, you would pretty much be modifying it permanently, which is a bit of a shame. But yeah, the option is there if you so desire. Um, let's bring down the contrast again because it's a bit too bright. <laughs> um, but yeah, going, putting that back on. Um, simple enough. Just pops back in. You don't want to pop that in all the way because if you do, Vegeta completely loses his neck. Um, he looks very stumpy that way. So bring the neck up a bit, gives him a bit of a neck, looks a lot better. Um, but yeah, in terms of the articulation, you can look up really well. He can look down well as well. Swivel side to side. Tilt is like so. Um, the neck peg, obviously, if you're not having it all the way in, it does have a tendency to pop itself out. Um, the actual lower neck joint does have a ball peg in there, so that can move freely as well. Arms can go up that far. Swivel all the way around. There is a butterfly joint, but this being a model kit, the arms tend to pop out quite easily. Um, if you use the full range of that butterfly joint, you get really good range. Um, you do get a bit of a, a opening there though. So yeah, um, bicep swivel. Unfortunately, single joint at the elbow. Um, I really feel like the original 
figurize uh, standard figures had sort of like a pop down feature which ended up mimicking the range of like figure arts joints i am not sure why they didn't do that here it's a bit of a shame that kind of limits his range somewhat and um, he does have a secondary swivel here though and um, not entirely sure why and um, he doesn't really need it but it is there and um, the wrists as i said they are meant to mimic um, almost figure arts, but they're more like Mafex because they're a sort of kind of straight and kind of angled. Um, I would assume that's so that they don't pop in too tightly. So they pop in just like so, and you get a hinge. You get to move it all the way around just like a figure arts joint. The abs waist section. Um, you can pop it up, but eventually it starts bringing this out of the socket instead of the joint. If you do that, you can go forward that much. Go back a little. Pop that back down. Um, waist gets swivel. It has a ball joint as well, so you get a lot of pivot. Um, you also honestly get more range out the waist than you do out the abs which is a bit of a shame and um, the two of them together you do get a bit more range so something to keep in mind and um, the hips they are designed for some reason to mimic what the 3.0 legs look like with figures and um, so you really could get away with this figure on your shelf looking like a 3.0 um, but it's just your standard uh, drop down style hips. So it drops down like so. If you drop it down, you get complete splits. No issues whatsoever. Legs can kick up that much. If you have the, the hips up fully, that's about as far as you can get with the kicks. That, sorry. Um, it popped itself down without me realising. <laughs> um, you also get thigh rotation, double joint at the knee, which gets some really nice range and actually looks really nice as well. Um, there is no cap there to be seen at all. Um, boots, strangely enough, are on a ball peg, so you do get a bit of pivot there and obviously boot swivel, which is something Figure Arts doesn't have. Um, the feet are just a ball peg, like so. So it is on a hinge. You can go back that far. Forward, but that much. Um, you have to make sure that ball peg doesn't pop itself out of place, though. Um, but it does have its own sort of range because that's on a ball peg. So you get quite a decent amount of range there. Um, you do get to articulation because they have somehow mimicked the figure arts articulation <laughs> on a model kit um, and hinge ankle pivot like so so yeah um, all in all like the articulation on this guy is really good um, and it's well hidden it looks just like a figure arts um so yeah if someone out there is looking for basically a hobby as well as a replacement to a figure arts base form vegeta which as of now they still haven't came out with one um apart from the namic vegeta a uh, sort of 2.5 version um yeah this really fills a spot easily um let's get this guy in to do a proper comparison between them and um, it's got the tons and art toys head on it so yeah two extremes one has really wide hair one has very little hair <laughs> honestly that's one of the only things that annoy me about this figure is that head like 
the hair is very, very thin, um, which it could have been easily avoided. Like, if Bandai would have, like, just put a couple of extra pieces in, that could have swayed that open, like, really well. Um, but yeah, before we go, I realise this video is getting on a bit. Let's pop that off. And give a quick comparison with the Demonical Fit head on. Bear with me. There we go. Um, that actually fit on a lot easier than I thought it would. Um, so maybe that peg is closer than I assumed. Um, obviously the Tonsonat head won't fit on it without modification anyway because it's harder plastic. But the standard heads do actually appear to fit. Um, so yeah. This to me, this has just instantly became my Super Vegeta on the shelf because the kit itself is slightly more bulky than the figure arts body. So yeah, um, this kit's staying like that. <laughs> he is keeping that hair on. Um, so yeah guys, let me know what you think down in the comments. Um, as always, link in the description if you want to purchase this guy. I think he's on AliExpress and Amazon. Um, I bought him from Amazon for 35 which seems a bit expensive for a kit. But when you think the only other base form Vegeta that's coming out just now is the Beast Deities 3.0, which I frankly didn't like the look of, plus it's 60 odd quid. Um, or buy a 2.0 plus a custom head, which then costs about the same price anyway. So yeah, um, definitely recommend it, guys. Um, model kits are a really good way to pass the time. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let me know what you think down in the description, uh, down in the comments. And until next time, I'll see y'all later.